Good evening, Dolphin fans and the rest of the world. Welcome to another episode of the Finns Bandwagon. <laughs> I'm your host, Evan Posner. With me always is my father, Fish Tank Hank. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Fish Tank Hank, how you doing? I'm doing great, you know. Um, Miami did their thing and we didn't make it. But we all know already that numero uno should be coming back. So that's the positive side. <laughs> Guys, I want to apologize for being a few minutes late. Inadvertently, I borrowed Mike McDaniel's watch, and it doesn't tell very good time. So unfortunately, we were a couple of minutes late. But I digress. We'll talk about that during the, the course of the show, and uh, and Hank will turn me around during the course of this show. And guys, we've dropped the link in since this will be the last time. What's up, I everybody? Did, related to the regular season and the playoffs, we're obviously going to continue throughout the offseason because we never get off that bad wagon. But if you'd like to join the show, don't forget to click on that link, and we can have some fun tonight, guys. So, Hank, as we do always, Sunday, recap your feelings about Sunday, the highs, the lows, the palpitations, the relaxations. Tell me how you were feeling watching that football game. Well, I was actually out and about during the football game. Sorry? I wasn't watching it on TV most of the first half. Okay. I was listening to it on the car, which makes it more intense. Oh, geez. Because you're sitting there listening to the these play-by-play -play calls. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're just waiting, waiting and waiting to hear what they're going to say, and they just keep going on about other stuff. You know? so, yeah. so it is a little more intense that way. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I was listening to it until Miami was close to tying or had tied them right around there. And I just recently went back and watched the full, I didn't watch the entire game. I watched a clip clips of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to see what I had missed and I missed quite a bit actually by not seeing what's going on. Yeah. But uh, like a uh, great for two cents made the I'd love for two cents to come on tonight. Uh, he made a very good point. It was better to listen to him than Romo. <laughs> it was, that was true. Romo had his moments. He likes to overanalyze a little bit and predict what's about to happen. Let, let the play happen. You know, let, let, let us get uh, let us get uh, uh, into the game on our own. We don't need any predictions during the course of the game. Uh, guys, hammer time. Your comment. Guys, hammer time. Two cents, everyone. We really appreciate it. Um, so. When it was 17 nothing, what were your thoughts? How were you feeling at that moment? My thoughts were Skyler better start doing something. When it got and, to seven and we better get we better get this game running game going and get, get never some did. points. Otherwise, this is gonna be over quick. Then when That's it got what I thought at that point in time. And then 17 to 17, what were you feeling? I was feeling like hot damn, now this is a game. What about what they always seem to do, giving up points heading into the half? Thank God they won the toss. Remember I told you on Finn's talk today when I was commenting? Thank God they win the toss. Yeah, they yeah. get the ball back. Yeah. But what were your thoughts of the fact that they were giving up points heading into the half? Were you still comfortable that they could come back? I was still comfortable half? that we could we could battle back, to be honest with you. And that defense came and did what I, what I thought it would do. It came and upset Josh Allen quite a bit. Yeah. But Josh Allen was not good. Let's, don't give, let, let's just – Put it out there right now. The teams that won in the playoffs during the course of this week, with the exception of the in the AFC, there were no juggernauts. The Bills did not play well. The Bengals did not play well. The Jaguars played well in the second half. The the obviously the Chargers choked. There was no the the the, the Ravens did what they could. The Dolphins did what they could with what they had. But the teams that were expected to win. Did not play well. If I was, if I was, if I was, I'd be more nervous if I was Kansas City facing Trevor Lawrence. The game between Burrow and Allen. Let's just talk for one second, and we'll go back to the Dolphins. That's that that, that that's a, that's a flip of a coin. Neither team has shown last game that they're a dominating force in the playoffs yet. Like honestly, so for me, that, that's what I can say. So let's talk about the second half because this was a tale of one thing that was very clear, which you said on Fifth Talk today, very apparent. This team never 
never can never put together a full game. And once again, here it was a tale where they played the middle of the game and forgot to play. They basically made a sandwich but forgot the bread. They made they they ate the inside of the sandwich but threw out the bread and forgot about the first and the fourth quarter. That's what basically happened to this football team, right? Yeah. So in the second half, the defense, Sealer, Wilkins, uh, let's put it, let, let's agree right here, you and me. That should be your center of your defense for the next ten for five, the next seven to ten years. You have that there. That gives you the center of a defensive line that will be tops in the NFL for the next seven to ten years. They were phenomenal. Five. At least five. Did you see Kristen Wilkins? I I was worried for Zach Sealer in that moment. I thought Kristen Wilkins literally was going to injure that guy. He has to <laughs> calm. Down. He parties more. He is more celebratory over that than ever than you'll ever be. It's crazy. And you party, you party like crazy. So just imagine <laughs> it's like fish tank can't get three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night in South Beach. I'm telling you. But <laughs> well, you know, I usually go to Clearwater or Tampa. Yeah, Clearwater. I'm, I know, I'm just kidding. I'm on South Beach. Side, that's right. <laughs> but you go ahead, you know, you tear down, you would tear down South Beach. Every um, now, every now and then, I escape over to Patrick yeah. Air Force Base. Yeah. But so when the de- when, when the defense fell apart for me, what was the turning point for you in the game? I have a turning point, like the the moment where you start to say, "Oh, that moment of what." Even after Will uh, Sealer scored that touchdown and we took the lead, and then we lost, and then we lost. What were like? When, what, did you ever have that trepidation that the, the Dolphins were not going to have the moxie? During the game, we're going to get to the offensive, the defense, and all the players later. But at what point did you start to feel like, uh, oh, this is getting away from us again? I didn't really feel like it got away from us at all. What What really surprised me was we had 11 minutes on the clock and we couldn't score. Yeah. That's That was the problem. We had 11 minutes to score and we didn't do it. You know, that's a lot of time wasted where, you know, and during that time we had interceptions and things like that. It it was a very, you know, back and forth game to me. And like I said, I was, I, but by the time I got halfway through it, I was sitting at a bar watching it. So I couldn't hear what was going on either. So, so then again, I was like, oh, all right, well, I'll just have my steak and watch the game. And from what I saw, it was a really good game up until the end. I mean, you you know, some things got lost along the way and it happens. But I I still I still like what Tyler was able to do, even though, you know, he gave up a, the ball a couple of times. I yeah. still liked a lot of what he was able to do. OK, the moment for me, the game was over. And I'll tell you, and it, it, it was just really what it was for me. And I'm, I was so happy that the way the team was playing. I had no expectations of winning. The fact that they kept it close, I'm so, I couldn't be prouder of the football team on a, on a whole. Let's just make that clear. I've been hard on the post-game show, and we're going to get into that, and you're going to flip me. But at the same time, it was third and 18 on your eight. There's no running back behind, behind next to or behind Skyler. He's in shotgun. And he drops back and he lets go of the ball. And I said to myself, you have the lead and you're going for it on third and 18. Now, aggressiveness is one thing. Stupidity is another. You, Thomas, you, your defense, let's make it clear. If he, if he's a statistician, McDaniel's a statistician, Hank, if, and he's such a smart guy, do you know, very quick question, I'm making it obvious, which football team, Prior to this game, in the last three games of the regular season, gave up the least amount of yards in the NFL. Do you know which team? The Miami Dolphins. They gave up 245 yards of offense on average the last three games tops in the NFL. The defense was light, was playing phenomenal, and was getting to Josh Allen. If, if you get two yards and you're kicking from the 10, the way Thomas Morstead can kick, the ball will probably have ended up on their 35 or 40, and you're letting your defense do their job. Instead, or you know what you could have done? You could have bombed it. Let Skyler Thompson throw it to the 50 or 40 yard line. Let him throw it deep. Trying to get the first down to continue to kill the clock in that moment was a turning point in the game because you gave them a short field, they scored, and you fell behind. And then we could never claw back. And because, and that was my biggest concern, is that he continued to do a playbook that Tua was there. If Tua was there, go for it. I don't care. I mean, they lost by three points. 
Exactly. Yeah, but that cost you really the game. I don't feel like the game was over till the, they hit that two minute mark, and there wasn't nothing Miami could do. Oh, I'm so no sorry. time. Brett, out. come on, Brett, come on the show, please. Brett, there's a link at the top. I'd love to spend time with you, Brett. No, but no hang. timeouts. No, no, but that's also we're going to talk about that. But overall, as a microcosm of this game, why do you think the Miami Dolphins lost this football game? You know why I think they lost the football game. If you've been watching the post game show, watching how I've been commenting, why do you think? What was? I don't want to say it overall. What was the key moment for you that cost us this football game? I, I don't really think that there's one key moment for me to be honest with you, Evan. With a straight think, face saying that? I, I think that there's quite a few things that happened over the span of the game. There were missed passes, especially two big drops by Waddle. I mean, there was a lot of things. It's not just on one thing for me. Um, but you know, you always told me you want the positive side yeah. on here. So no, no, but I'm going to get to the positive after the game. I'm going to talk about the positive. I'm asking you for this game. I think the team, the team play beyond our wildest dreams as a whole. But what was the root cause for our for everyone watching? Why you think they they came up a little bit short? I I don't think there is one root cause. You don't think so? No. Would you like me to send you a picture? There's a you picture. Know, Let me ask you something. If you're trying to say it's the coach and and no, it's no, no, time I'm asking you, or if you're saying it's the rookie who threw two interceptions, no, no. I'm talking about the fact you're that you're it's Waddle who dropped two big no, passes. No, but that's a microcosm. But when you have two twenty left and you can control the rest of the game in a two minute drill, why are you not aware of what's happening and you're relying on others to tell you? So, Hank. Right now, you and I are talking, right? Yeah. You and I still have the ability, because we're looking straight at each other, to look yeah. at the comments, see what Brett's writing, see what JM is writing. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is the best network in the world. We are multitasking, but we're looking up. Our head coach has his face in a play call sheet, not knowing what's going on. So you're on. blaming the coach. No. In Cut that through moment, the chase. You're blaming yeah, the coach. In this For this game, he let... The team that blood, sweat, and tears for this guy, who loves this guy, who would go through a brick wall for them, he continued to make the same rookie mistakes 18 games in. There and were a lot of bad things that happened in that game, and it wasn't just him. But where was the offense? Let me ask you. You think the run game. The offensive line wasn't great. Whatever. Skylar Thompson. He, oh, he, you even said during the they have to have a balanced attack. They need to do it. All I'm saying in this moment, I want McDaniel back. Let's tell everyone say this. My number one issue, we're going to talk about it after, McDaniel is a smart guy. McDaniel is a great guy. The team loves him. It's a family orientation. He's turned this team around. It doesn't feel like it, it was it was the last two years. But, Hank, you and I are here as a team. We're all here as a team. But in the end, as the host of the, the initial host of this show, for example, I have to guide you. I ask you the questions. The head coach or the lead, Bobby can be in my ear. Bobby's going to tell me what to do. But I also need to double check myself. Don't rely on what's up, Adam. Me. So for me, my number one problem, vaping. Yeah, he may have been vaping. It was a little cold, but at the same time. For me right now, the cost of this game is that the, the team did what they needed to do. The Josh Boyer did what he needed to do. The defense did what he needed to do. And in that moment, to go to fourth and six with your four, fourth string quarterback, not giving him every chance to play, like in the end, Hank, they're in the huddle with five seconds left. The reason they're still in the huddle is McDaniel's still talking to them. He should be screaming. It cuts off after a certain amount of time. I know. But the fact that he didn't say it to so He couldn't have seconds, been talking to him, Evan. But exactly. Yeah, but at that point, Hank. At that it, point, it cuts off like 10 or 15 but, but seconds. Exactly, I know that. But the point is, is that because of what he did at 20 and 30 seconds, not being prepared, that hurt his football team. His team did everything. But they you could think to that's win. the reason why they lost? The It's always what you remember last. The last Miami Dolphins play was a Mike McDaniel fumble. You kind yeah, of say, right. you tell him, you told me the players that made the, made the wrong mistake there? Well, I see it differently. How do you see it? I, I, want, I want you to listen. How do you see it? I see it as a combination. Uh, You're on mute. Up. Hey, what's up, Bobby? Hey, I'm not I can't on mute. hear you. You like to join you. the show? Go. You're, You're muted mute. now. Oh, Mr. Producer, look, Mike McDaniel on the offense here. Look at this, Mike McDaniel's leading the leading the producer. Look, not even the head the head coach of the network, Hank, 
Can't get the play in. Can you hear me? Now? Yeah, go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Go yes. for it. Go right. for it, Mike McDaniel. Look, I want to. I know where you're coming from, and I talked about it earlier, Evan. But I want to say I want to get uh, Hank's point across because I see where Hank's coming from because that's something the way I look at it. This football team. I just talked about this. This football team. Nobody other than Dolphin fans and maybe the Dolphins believed they were going to win this game. This they were going against a Super Bowl contender. They went in there I to agree. Buffalo. I agree. I against agree. a Super Bowl favorite. Hold on. They went against a Super Bowl favorite with a seventh round quarterback, their third string quarterback, who they should not have, that shouldn't have been playing, but our guys hurt and, and Kuderberg too is hurt. They go in there. Our defense, who everybody's been criticizing with Josh Wait, Boyer, so. steps up three turnovers, two interceptions, yeah. a fumble. Yeah. Skyler Thompson, yes, two inter- he has two interceptions as well, but so does Josh Allen. But you know what? Jalen Waddell dropped a lot of balls. Uh, jo- Jeff Wilson dropped the ball. Tyreek dropped the ball. There was a lot of miscues. And, yes, I agree. at the end of the game, that 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 fourth and one, which it should have been, that was my whole thing about head coach. You know, you're the head coach. Focus on the field. But his head's down to the play sheet. I know where you're coming from. But they this is a – you know, Hank had it 28 28- – 28 17, I think. I had 28 it, I think, 21. Hank, correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you, sir. 21. So 28 21, Miami. I had it 22 21. You could say because we're Dolphin fans, and that's okay. I knew Hank knows why I picked the Dolphins and whatever. But nobody else besides Miami fans were picking Miami. Miami went into Buffalo and had those guys on the ropes <laughs> until the final 40 seconds when the refs gave him the first down. So I know what you're saying. I yeah, just want to say that's this. what I was saying. This is the bandwagon. Hey. This is the bandwagon. Here's the positive outlook. Your team that was hurt I'm agree and with you. limping to this game held agree these guys. He's telling you second. what I was trying so to I'm tell proud you. Of this but I agree with you. But you know, like I'm agreeing with you. I've never said to both of you. I've never <laughs> said that this team. I am proud of this team. I'm proud to be a Miami Dolphins fan. But unfortunately. To, on that game, during that game, every member of the defensive staff, Danny Crossman had a better coaching game than Mike McDaniel. Drop balls or not, he he miscalculated in the most crucial moment. Bobby, you said this on the post game. He, in the moment of truth, fumbled the ball. And all he had to do was look up. Oh, wait a second. All at the same time, he didn't have timeouts. If he wasn't taking the timeouts to try to get the, the – remember we all said during the, the – I said it during the Fence Talk today in the last week bandwagon. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Come on. If you don't make the play so complicated, you'd have some timeouts. Every timeout that Skyler took, he had to go talk to McDaniel to find out what the play was. So what's the positive side Listen, of that? The positive side is – the positive side is – and we're I'm talking about the – the positive side is that the Dolphins showed that next year they're no longer afraid of Buffalo. Buffalo knows that if if, if Nick if two, I'm going to say this very clearly. I don't care what anybody. If, I'm going to say this right now. Tua on the field, we win. Brandon Jones on the field, we win. Nick Needham on the field, we win. Raheem most if we had Raheem Mostert and Tua on the field, both of them on the offensive side of the ball with the defense that we were playing, game over. Because Raheem Mostert was able, would have been able to get seven yards of carry. Raheem Mostert was the most successful part of that game last time we played them. And Tua. Those two combinations on the offense would have made the most significant difference on the team. I'm proud of Skyler. He's a seventh rounder. This team needed that comfort of having a, a balanced attack. And why were they more balanced last time they played them? Because the defense was okay. was Tua and Mostert. And that's what they were missing most. Uh, I am yeah. proud of this team. Well, I don't I'm think, frustrated. Listen, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I Miami didn't lose because Tua wasn't in the game or Mozart was not in I the game. I said they would have Miami, had a, they would have played this, better. They, they, I know, but I don't want to say I think the fact of the matter is Buffalo did not this is the positive of it. Buffalo, yes, the, at the end 30 34 30 Miami 30, beat Miami the Bills did Bill didn't beat Miami. Let me boy. <laughs> <laughs> hold on a second, host. My goodness. <laughs> yes, Miami hey, beat well, Miami. What is with, with you guys? Quarterback. So, 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 what's wrong? What happened anyway? What are we doing? What do you mean? Come on, guys. 
Let's be mean? nice now. We I'm thought, nice. We are nice. I'm, we are I'm just nice. messing with you. Steve was. Guys, we love Steve our friend saying, Adam. Guys, who else is joining the show? We need people to Steve come in and come in. Ever got into Hank Guys, Stash. That's Guys this is this about. is an intervention for me <laughs> to get over my McDaniel. Okay, Hank, Guys, I mean, uh, Evan can't last past that stash. <laughs> Guys, who would have thought at the beginning of the year that the Jacksonville Jaguars would be the only Florida team left in the playoffs? <laughs> who would have thought? I love what good for them. And you wonder what? You I know what think the biggest awesome. difference between I mean, I mean, I mean they they have, I'm all. happy for them. And by the way, you know what they have that the I mean, Buccaneers did not Jacksonville. By the way, you know who you know who the Buccaneers, you know what do you know the Jags have that the Miami Dolphins and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers didn't have this season? A playoff win? A head coach. A healthy quarterback? Oh. oh. A head coach. Because <laughs> last night, Tom, expecting Tom Brady to throw the ball 66 times. You know what, Tom? You know, I don't know if you watch the Peyton Manning broadcast. Do you know that the Peyton Manning broadcast, do you know he basically said in, halfway through the first quarter, I guess they gave up the run? They gave up the run five minutes into the game. They, all they wanted to do was Brady to throw, 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 throw. So – that the, that was another coaching disaster. McDaniel actually coached a better game than that. For I'll give him credit. Okay, guys, the end of the season. The game is the game. Let's not talk about the the, the 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 how how things are reacting. The off season. I'll talk about the off season. We're gonna before we talk about the players, let's talk about McDaniel, and let's talk about Greer. They had their press conference yesterday, and I'm gonna ask both of you and anyone who else wants to join. Hank, I'll go to you first. Bobby, we know where it is, and then I'll go. Hank, was this a successful season for you? My Chris Greer and Mike McDaniel, to, uh, Chris Greer and Mike McDaniel said this was a successful season. To you, because of the injuries, to you, was this a successful season? If you take everything into account, yes, they made it to the playoffs, and they haven't done it since 2016. So was that success? Yes. Was it as much success as they should have or could have had? No. So it's kind of a balance for me on both ends. You're welcome. I see, You're welcome. I, I see it as, as both, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I don't know where Bobby sits. Where do you sit? I know Bobby? where Bobby you... sits. Bobby, I can, I can recite what Bobby's going to say. Bobby, go. Well, uh, if it, uh, fish tank, fish tank should know where I'm going to go on this because we've talked about it. We this I said it earlier in the year, but I'll say it again. Um, what was Miami's record last year? Nine and eight. Same. Nine and eight. What is their? It's the same record as this year. Here's the difference. Last year, Miami the favorite didn't go Miami's way. The team won, and Miami got eliminated from the playoffs. This year, the team lost, which was the Patriots, and the Dolphins got in. Um, I said it what the playoff getting into the playoffs was not going to mean success for me this year. It was winning a playoff game. I would say it would be a successful season. There's a lot of positives that. in this football season. Say what? Huh? John's that a genius. Was, uh, By the way, I would like to correct you. John's right. We actually finished with a worse record than we did last year. We lost nine games this season, that, not eight. <laughs> that John, Buffalo, I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> that Buffalo game Go ahead, though, Hank. proved that Buffalo game was close well, to a win so yes uh no 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 that's my point Let me, I'll, I'll say that. And so, so, but but <laughs> hold on but i was gonna say no you're you're right hank that's one of my points with the positives because i'm just saying what i say what i you know me i like to stick to what i'm saying is that since they lost you know tony sperano adam gase and now mike mcdaniel bring their team to the playoffs and they lose in this they're zero and three in that with those three coaches so to me, it doesn't count as a success. But this season, what you can do looking at this season, there's a lot of positives of this season, especially with the fight that this team showed against Buffalo in a game they should not have been in in the wild According to game. everybody it, else. According to everybody. And, you know, we could say, Hank and Evan, that, yes, when you go – I said 22-21 because I believe, yes, I you cannot really stop Josh Allen throwing that. touchdowns. I thought it was be a bunch of field goals. Hank had 28-21. And Dolphin fan, but NFL fans in the world might go, oh, Dolphin fans are crazy. Sure, you're rooting for your team. But guess what? May have been crazy, but the Dolphins scored 31 points on a top five yeah. defense in a game yeah. with Skylar Thompson. And so, yes, and nine, the and defense, eight, nine and eight. Got to give the defense props. And the defense <laughs> woke up. Xavier Howard. Xavier they scored Howard on them. Showed up, you know. 
what what Evan said at the beginning with Zach Sealer and Christian Wilkins, you the, the Dolphins cannot let those guys go. Those guys should be no. with Jalen Phillips and Bradley yep. Chubb. Be your line for years to come because that's Definitely. the positives of it. You go, okay, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle had a very a, a tough game. I, I want to say a bad game because he dropped a lot of balls he should have caught. Skyler, people keep going, oh, well, the rookie quarterback, the seventh round. But guess what? Skyler was throwing dimes that were being dropped. So, yeah. you know, they can only get better next year. So here's the positives. It could get better next year. Miami has a lot of work to do in the offseason. We're going to go over that, Fish Tank and I, and the whole network, obviously, throughout the offseason. I'm about to go but over it. Don't, you don't can look my thunder. I'm just saying is that there are a lot of He's positive to look at this season. Not much change. I mean, offense jumped from 20-something to type six, <laughs> the top six. But there's a lot of work to be done. But there's positives definitely to look at this season. Okay. Hop on the bandwagon. It's only up from we're here. We're about to go on the bandwagon I, right I now. see somebody we're, already saying linebackers. Yeah, we're going to get there, guys. Guys, we're going to get That's there. for sure. I see I want somebody to saying to linebackers play, on there. You know about, that? Before we do a high-level review of the offseason. You know what we need to do? We need to trade down pick number 53 and get some more picks. I know. Can I? So we can add I depth the question to the yet. team. I haven't answered the question yet. Guys, <laughs> was this a successful season? No. And why wasn't it a successful season? Because it was too bipolar. Up, down, up, down, up, down. For me, a team That's cannot fair. be that. The one thing that they were, one the one thing that I am, the one thing that has stuck with me and has ne I've never forgotten and I use it actually in life as well. Whenever and, and I, I was just coaching my kids' hockey team before this. The producer of this network has said one word the entire season. Would you like me to say it, Bobby, or would you like to say it? What were you looking for from this Go team? Go ahead and say it. Consistency. Consistency. This team was consistent yeah, at being. This team was consistent at being inconsistent. <laughs> Okay, and that frustrates. That's me. fair. That's fair. But okay. damn. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the, when you are losing, when you're winning three, losing three, with the team has no balance. I know. Whether it was the running game versus the passing game, whether it was winning or losing, there was no consistency. Hell, they couldn't team. even be consistent with that. I thought they were going to go on a three-win stretch or a five-win exactly. stretch. They went yeah, one. one. It's like so. I was so, waiting for the stretch I, to go again. So for me, this me the reason why this is. A, the reason why this is not a successful season for me is because I don't believe in moral victories. And the fact of the matter is, is that this team, even with the injuries, winning one or two of those games that were so close where we didn't adjust could, could have completely flipped the fact that we were hosting a playoff game. Think about this. Us hosting the playoff game and being in the position of, of Jacksonville or something like that by winning two more games. Or so, sorry, not Jacksonville. Could we have hosted a playoff game? I can't remember. If we would have won two more games and we would have flipped Buffalo, we could have tied them. We could have won the tiebreak. A lot of things could have changed our, by winning two more football games. And a lot of those games were in our grasp. So for me, the New England game and the Buffalo game and the Green Bay game, those were games that were just lost because of Miami Dolphins. But the Miami Dolphins lost more football <laughs> games because of their own ineptitude than the football team dominating. You know, can we all agree on that? Or did the teams beat them? Did Green Bay beat us or did we beat ourselves the way we – because Tua was concussed, we had a bad game. The New England game, we definitely beat ourselves. And then the Buffalo game, the way we ended that football game, giving Josh Allen the ball and not doing what we need to do with the run game, cost us the football game there. Overall, am I – do I have a positive outlook, which I'm about to go into and we're all going to talk about? Yes. Overall – Though, let's just go to sure? Yeah, 100%. You're going to see how positive I'm going to be. I'm going to flip completely. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, McDaniel, we know, is going to be back. If yes, you sir. would, based on what you saw this season, you had the decision. It was handed to you. Would you keep, would, do you want to keep Chris Greer? Do you want to? Not, are they going to? We know we're going to. They're going to. Would you want to keep him? Would you trust him to? Improve this team next season. It's a simple question. No. Hank? No, you're asking me a legitimate question. I'll, I'll always give an honest answer. No. Hank. Hank? He hasn't been able to fix this line for 20 years. And that's what so, our big our big. So do you all agree with me? This point is the offensive line. So for me. Is I our biggest issue. That's why two is getting hurt. Yeah. That That's why. Uh, the young rookie was running for his life half the time. 
Yeah. I, I mean, you know, and Chris Greer's had close to 20 years on the Dolphins staff and he can't get it done as personnel guy. Yeah. Well, who wouldn't keep him? So the I, thing is, I don't think he can get it done. Yeah. What I, so for me, we know that T Stephen Ross is loyal. My number one priority this season, yeah. if I was, if I had the ear of Stephen Roth, and if I was locked, if I had five minutes and two minutes in an elevator with Stephen Ross, the first thing I would do is get on my hands and knees and say to him, You're a smart businessman. You know what smart business people? They surround themselves with the best people. Go hire yourself an experienced football executive to run football operations. You're too chicken, sh you're too chicken crap. I'm following the guidelines of the network. You're full of too chicken crap. <laughs> To, 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 high to, to ever let go of Chris Greer, who's been here for two decades. I was still in high school when he was still part of this football team. Go hire and have president of football operations and let him make the call. Give him one more year with McDaniel, and if he doesn't, let him pull the trigger. Because if McDaniel shows growth, then I'm then I'm fine. Because before we get to the players and what our expectations are, can you guys agree with me on this? Mike McDaniel improved this offense immensely. They were a top ten. They were a top five or six D offense this season. They faltered at the end without Tua. Hank, important question: Do you believe that Mike McDaniel should drop the play call sheet? You can call in the plays. Let the, let Kellen Moore. You can hold your big paper. Be an Andy Reid. Be a be a Mike Mike McCarthy type. Give it to the offensive coordinator or give it to an offensive assistant to call in the plays because you're taking away from the fact that you need to monitor your six. I said this on the post game show. Monitor the defense, monitor the offense, be it what's going on in the game. You want to have your headset on, know what's going on, but focus on developing this team. If this team wants to get to the next level, we need you to be our head coach, not our head coach slash offensive coordinator. What are your thoughts on that? And then we'll get on to the positive parts of the show. Well, this is the positive part of the show. No, like and the real, the more I'm going to flip, where I'm going to flip. Well, this is still the positive part because I'm about to give you the positive side <laughs> go. of that. You know, then, Bobby, you go. You're, you're, you're asking some questions that can go either way, to be honest. With what do you. you want? What do I want? Yeah. Out of who? Would you have Mike McDaniel drop the play call sheet and focus on being more of a, a head coach? I can't like say that because all we have to judge him off of is his first year as a head coach. Now, he might he might be a multitasker where he wants to, to be doing that, and I don't see a problem with it as long as he's mindful of things. But, you know, he showed some inexperience, of course, throughout the year, and it did hurt at times, you know. Uh, the last time, you know, the last fourth down where it's fourth and one and we ran out of time, delay a game, blah, blah, blah. So we all know. But I, I just, I don't know. That would have to be a call that I would want him to make as a head coach. Uh, I think he would have a better grasp on whether he's able to balance both or not. Okay, Bobby? Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Another another important lesson I need to learn. We're halfway through the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the best network. We're growing 620 plus subscribers. We're going to have a lot of great stuff going on on this network, thanks to our leader and this, this wonderful community that we that he has built around us. So, Bobby, what are your thoughts on McDaniel and dropping the play call sheet? Because you wanted a head coach. He's no Doug Peterson. He hasn't won a Super Bowl yet. He hasn't. I don't think he's earned the right to do both yet. So, so. Hank wanted a veteran coach. I wanted a veteran coach. When the Dolphins fired Flores, um, you know, of course I said I thought they should have fired Greer and Flores. I don't want to do this whole back and forth thing, but they did. And uh, they kept, they hired, you know, I wanted a veteran coach because I wanted a head football coach. Head football coach meaning someone who is managing the entire team, the, man, the entire game. Yeah. They're not looking at a play sheet. They're not calling defensive plays. They're not calling offensive plays. The Dolphins hired Mike McDaniel. That's the head coach. We root for our head coach. We move forward. What happened at the end of this last game, despite the Dolphins busting their ass 34-31? Uh, What's up, Vito? What's up, Vito? But uh, the, what killed it, and that's why, again, despite how great the Dolphins did in regards of fighting and clawing back and then put, having these guys against rope, 
the one thing we're talking about the most right now in regards of this great game that we went out, and I know we don't believe in quote unquote moral victories, is that one mistake at the end, which was he thought it was first and 10 when it was fourth and one time was running and he, he messed up. And that's why I wanted a veteran coach, somebody who is a head coach. When somebody says, oh, we need an offensive coach. No, we need a defensive coach. No, I want a head coach. I don't care if he's from defensive side of the ball or the offensive side of the ball. So for me, and uh, my daughter obviously doesn't agree with me on this point. Um, sorry. But, that's not who we got, but that's not who we got. Bobby, exactly. Right? No, that's not who we got. We have an offensive coach. So he's based our head on coach. So, so based my on point him, is, what would you do? Hire, hire down a loss. Him, which we are. It worked. No, listen. Yeah, I know. No. Go watch what he said. I agree with get him. Get a guy. I Go. Go ahead, Evan. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sure. agreeing with you. I you know, say continue. You're on a bit of a delay. No. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Um, I'm just saying is that I agree. I think you need to go get somebody who could take that off of him. If I was the, maybe the front office, I would encourage him to say, hey, look, Let's focus more on the game. Or as Evan has said in the past, have somebody who's in his ear saying, hey, it's fourth and one. It's not It's not first and ten. Put your head up. Call timeout. Or not. You wasted your timeout already. Yes, exactly. You wasted your that, timeout. That's the issue. So, so yes, but you're not. we're not losing them. So that's the point. So if I'm the Dolphins, for me, I'm bringing on somebody who can either alleviate the play calling duties, which there are yeah. plenty of good offensive coaches who could do it, or – getting someone who could be the eyes for him on the field, which is like, then what's the point? So that's what, that would, that's what I would yeah, do. Yeah, Bobby, you keep on freezing. You might want to come in and out after. Okay. Okay. No, I agree with you. All I'm going to say, and we're going to move on, is that I want – Hank, and I I like this football coach. I was I, – when we brought him in, I like his demeanor. I like what he's done. The reason I've been hard on him is because – this team was built for success this year. They went all in with Tyree Kill, Teron Armstead. Then at the deadline, you were the biggest player in the game, going to get Jeff Wilson and Bradley Chubb. You're doing this because you want to win. And yeah. the the thing is that not many teams, and I did this on the post game hike. I went through all the teams that are still that made the playoffs and the teams that lost. And the teams that are winning are teams that when the first year head coach came in. There were no expectations on him. The expectation and the team and the two teams that faltered in the playoffs this year the worst were the Vikings and the Dolphins. What do they have in common? First year head coaches with experienced, high expectation football teams. When you are on the verge of winning, you don't go then hire the youngest guy in the room. You go hire the experienced guy to get you over the hump. You don't go hire the young tyke. The, the young types are there to develop players and work with them, and they're there to develop. There's no high expectations on them. Wow. He was given high expectations. Name me the last coach you could remember. Off the top of your head, I can't. That was a first-year head coach who came in who was expected in that moment to take their team to the Super Bowl. He I was don't given think, Super I don't Bowl think roster. anybody had Miami pegged as going to the no, Super Bowl. But the, they ha- you had 13-3. Oh, you had 13-3. That's me. That's yeah. me. I know. I know that. But as the team grew after three and zero oh, and eight and three, they were going to win the division. Everyone was on their on their hoot. All I'm saying is that was the only thing. Now let's talk about the next season. All right. I'm not going to go into the details of all players. I'm going to save that for Finn's no. talk. No, no, we're not doing that today. We have the whole off season. On a whole, I'm going to ask you a very. Uh, this is a very important question. All right. After what you saw this season, with what they were able to do with what they had on that field on Sunday. Are your expectations for this football team lower, equal, or higher than they were at the beginning of this season? Higher. I fully agree with you. Higher. Tell me why. You were missing 11 guys. So you were missing 11 guys. That's half. Okay. So you said, you said 13, three and one. So basically, they need to do that next year if they get everyone back. Because for me, you have in your lineup right now, Tyreek Hill you didn't have. 
Teron Armstead, you didn't, you have now, before last offseason, you did not have Teron Armstead, you didn't have Tyreek Hill, didn't you did not Chubb, have didn't Bradley have a lot Chubb, of people. you did not, you're going to go, you didn't, you didn't have Cater Kohu growing like that, you didn't, you're going to have Tua back, and we're going to get to Tua, and we're not going to talk about Tua today, because everyone's talking about Tua enough, Tua's back next year, Tua is the best option we have for next year, Go out and get a backup who's capable because people who keep Skyler, he's fine as a backup. No, no, no. The only advantage you're going to get a backup who can compete with just to be there as a, an option at training camp is that any backup you get will be happy to come try out here who's decent because they know that if Tua does get injured, they have the opportunity to play. And it's a no tax state. I'm sure you're enjoying the no tax state of uh, Florida. So there's benefits to coming and playing Miami, right? So and Miami is a growing team. Look at what the team has on paper. For me next year, the reason why I want to get back on this, Mike McDaniel has the opportunity of a lifetime next season. He did not have – when he was hired for this job, he did not have Tyreek Hill signed. He did not have Bradley Chubb signed. He did not have Kristen Wilkins balling. He did not have uh, a return – yeah. he didn't have Tater he, they, he has players now on his football team that got a taste of the playoffs who have never been in the playoffs, and if they had – Three or four of those players, we know what kind of team they would have had in the playoffs. The expectation for him next year is, I'll put it to you this way. I give him all the rope in the world next year if he can adjust and learn from his mistakes and recover from what went on and he learns from it. Next year, if he can't win with the football team he has, then he's super – then all I think even you and Bobby will jump off, jump off the bandwagon of Mike McDaniel. Because next year, Mike, the, the cap is flexible. You're going to get Byron Jones off the uh, off the cap. You're going to get Mike Kosicki. You can always adjust the cap as you need. That's just kind of a league. The Saints, when Drew Brees was there, were always over the cap, and they were able to adjust before the beginning of the year. Next year, what do you do? You, do you consider them based on if they had everyone back on paper? Don't you expect them to be a Super Bowl contender based on what you saw this year? What they did with the depleted lineup against great teams like Buffalo? I do. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's the thing. That's what I was saying, and. Even though you had half your product Thank you, Steve. on the field against Buffalo, who should have outscored won. and whooped our butts, they turned around and brought in a game plan, and the defense held up and, and did a did did some amazing things for us, yeah. to say the least. So, you know, you know, it was a quality game. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I was kind of back and forth listening to it on the radio. So yeah. that was a little bit of a back and forth for yeah. me. And I, I had a good time with it. And I, I see nothing but positive for this. Yeah. And I'm going to keep going most... forward. I, I don't see a lot of positive in the draft, though. I, I hope that they, like I said earlier, I hope they trade back number 53. Because I think we have we'll 77 and 79 or yeah. something like that. And if they, they trade need depth. back, they need depth. 80, they need depth. Get an eighty and a hundred, maybe for that fifty-three. They need depth. They need depth. They yeah. need depth. I like. I like that. They need. A th but my number one priority, even because I'll put it to you this way: we talked about the offensive line just quickly. Three of the players on that offensive line have earned their stripes. So next year they really are fighting for two holes. Armstead's going to get healthy. Williams is still going to be at center, and Hunt's still going to be at right guard. So similar to last year, which is same old Dolphins, unless they get a center. Unless they get a superstar center and they move him to left guard, exactly. They yeah. literally three sixty percent of the offensive line when healthy is are, are great. Okay, um, but I'll, let me just make one important point in that uh, Steve will. I'm going to use another sport for a second. He doesn't believe that Tua is a franchise quarterback. Who for me, uh, Steve on the previous show and everyone people still have this. For me right now, Tua had his moments. He had up and downs, whatever. His stats this year. If healthy for a whole season, would have been top three in the NFL. The man still, even when he struggled, finished with the highest passer rating in the league. The one thing this guy needs, the best thing that could have happened to him actually was them losing because he wouldn't be fighting to get back so quickly. He is going to rest his brain. I am from Canada. I am up north. The One of the best superstars in the NHL has had – five or six more concussions in his career than Tua. Tua is not concussion prone. Tua needs to adjust on how he falls, and, and, and he also needs to get rid of the ball. If Tua <laughs> over this offseason gets rid of the ball, 
and learns how to slide and learns how to do the basic things to adjust as a quarterback, Tua, with this offense, is going to have a better season than he did last season. There's no one out there who's better than him unless you're going to get Aaron Rodgers. Tom Brady is finished, and we're not talking about that anymore because the way he was last night, he's finished. Lamar Jackson's injury prone. There's no, Derek Carr is going to cost you too much money. Yeah, and Lamar Jackson's always injury prone at the end of the season. Exactly. And he's and, and honestly they're gonna, franchise, and they're gonna franchise him. I feel bad for the guy, you know, he's stuck Tua, in the middle and they're gonna franchise yeah. him. Tua's gonna get 150 to 200 days off. He's gonna relax, he's gonna get his head in shape. He knows that he has unfinished business, and the team right now is he knows that next year this job is his. And he last year there was that nervousness in for him this year that it wasn't his, he had to prove something. He proved that he's able to lead this football team. The problem is he has to learn how to stay healthy. He literally needs to follow who his hero is, and that's Dan Marino, who we all know found the guy or let it fly. He needs to get rid of the football. Get rid of the football, and you're going to be just fine next year. So that's what they need to work on with him, and I believe that this football team, with Mike McDaniel's offense, with the – Ability to go sign free agents because you want to people want to come where there's a winner, and they did show moments of greatness in the fact that Tyree Kill is here, the fact that J- Bradley Chubb is here, the fact that Jalen Waddle's here, the fact that Christian. We have a stacked lineup of great players and a fun environment to play in. It was fun to be a Miami Dolphins fan this year, and we showed that we can beat anybody in this league or keep it close, even with a decimated lineup where a secondary had. Uh, your 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 best uh, your most superstar cornerback was playing with two bad groins and somehow still was able to keep up with Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs in the, the most important game he showed up. Everyone, yeah. be proud to be a Miami Dolphins fan. Great point he with did. Byron Jones. Yeah, Stand Byron Jones. Jones is done. Yeah, he's gone. If we can't trade him, cut him. Yeah, it's one hundred percent. Byron Jones is done. He he's done. Guide. I would rather – there's no other team I would be rather cheering for the Miami Dolphins right now because you want to know what? <laughs> we did a lot with nothing, more with yes. less than any other team in the NFL. Yes. More with less than any team in the NFL. And Uno's coming back. And Uno's coming back whether Steve likes it or not. Go look <laughs> at his stats. The guy it needs to be – he's proved that he's better than Chad Pennington. He's, which is the minimum Bobby wanted. He's the best quarterback we've had since Marino. He knows he has unfinished business. And no, nothing makes somebody more angry. He's going to come back more motivated than he was this season. That's look how good he, okay, go Think about this, Hank. Do you not agree that he was more mo- he was so motivated this year to prove people wrong? You don't think that he wants to prove people are wrong again next year? He's more motivated. Yeah. Definitely. So, guys. Look at our beautiful new logo. We're growing as a network. It's fun to be a Miami Dolphins fan. We have so much to look forward to. This has been a great show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to do the the same rundown that Bobby loves to do and tell me if I'm wrong and he'll cut me off in my ear. We have so much going on this week. Tomorrow we probably have another episode of Fast Break followed by No Holds Bar. Maybe I'll do a little peek into that show. I love talking with those guys with Alex Brown and Alfred and, and Justin the group there. Then we're sure we're going to have Bottom Up Fins Up where my, where, uh, where Mike the Hebrew Hammer and his dad Lewis are going to rip me to shreds for all my negativity on Mike McDaniel. But see, I flipped it into a positive. I'm giving him another shot. Then – after that, we got. I don't know if there'll be a huddle up and wait, but we'll. I'm never. I'm never sure about that, but I'm sure they'll sneak in a little bit. Then we got the beautiful Fitz talk today on Saturday, where he gets that beautiful mug to my right uh, on Saturday, talking about the off season with the founder of this network. Guys, we got a lot going on. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to always fins up. Be proud to be a Miami Dolphins fan. You want to know what this team had its moments but in the end they took us for a ride we snuck we did we did what we could in the playoffs we should be proud of this football team no one expected to do anything we cost a lot of betters a lot of money and you want to know what go party like Kristen wilkins just don't injure the counterpart thank god zach sealer's not hurt swear to god if we ever get caught, honestly hank if you ever bump into Kristen wilkins i'll tell you i've met that man run the other way shake Look his hand run the other way Steve Malloy saying is to a rookie again next year. No, he's a seasoned veteran. He's a seasoned veteran. And, guys, I'll be on the Tua train. Uno's right behind me. Honestly, 
You want to know what? They're going to go get a great coach. You learn from under Daryl Bevel. Nick Hicks, his his trainer, is going to be teaching him how to slide. He is going to be everybody. Slide. Before we go, just remember, guys, Tua will be at my. I, 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 if Tua is smart, he should be going to Miami Marlins training camp, and he should be learning how to steal bases and slide from first to second. That's how he'll learn how to slide, how to get down. And you want to know what? That's all he needs to learn how to do, guys. This, this, the future is bright. We have a lot of draft coverage coming up. We'll be following up on the offseason on the next episode of the bandwagon. We'll talk more about what we've learned over the last week. I'm sure there'll be media day where all the players are going to talk. And I'm sure we'll get to see that a little bit. We'll see what's going on with the playoffs, how that affects the Miami Dolphins. We'll talk about what, what high expectations are. There's a lot of great things going on in the network. Honestly, guys, it's been a pleasure doing this show in the regular season with Fish Tank. It's a dream come true to be part of this network, to be able to express what's going on. Hank, any final words? You know, I just want to thank everybody for following along with us this year. We had a great time. Yeah. Um, I haven't really been putting much out, but, you know, Evan's got a lockdown on everything. So I just let him go for a while and I can just sit back and. I've learned from the best, Hank. I've learned from the best. (laughs) Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out. And always, fins up, guys. Fins up, everybody.